Suppose it's early 1940s and your country is at war with another state and enemy planes every so often attack your land. Now, how would you detect the enemy plane before it's too close? We know that planes are very noisy, but at a distance, sound dissipates and we are faced with the problem of amplifying the sound which human ear probably cannot detect. One thing to realize is if you have a source that is radiating some sort of signals, in our case sound signals, then at the distance these signals, especially the ones that are initiated close to each other, become parallel. Now it turns out that if you build a parabolic mirror, should we call it, then incoming rays, which we assume to be almost parallel, will rebound against the surface of this parabola and will travel somewhere else. Now, it turns out that all these incoming rays, after they reflect, will actually concentrate or intersect and at one unique point. And here's what we're going to show. So let's do the simplest case. We have a parabola y equals x squared, and the incoming rays are modeled as straight lines. So let's call this x equals c, where c is some constant. And we consider just one sound wave arriving. Now we are going to make use of a rule in physics that if you have a flat surface and you have an incident ray hitting the surface at some angle alpha, then it will reflect at the same angle. The problem is, though, that our surface here is a parabola. It is not a straight line. But since we are considering a reflection at a specific point, we can understand what this flat surface is. And of course, it's going to be tangent at that point. So the problem now is to calculate this angle of incidence alpha, draw it here, and understand the behavior of this reflected line. So this angle also becomes alpha. How should we proceed? Well, let's draw a, li a line parallel to the x axis. Then we know that this angle here is a right angle and it's split in two different angles. One represents the slope of the tangent line and the other is alpha, the, the angle we want to find. So if we find the slope, the angle of the slope of this tangent line, we can do 90 minus that and deduce alpha. So this angle becomes 90 minus alpha. As we all know, tangent of this angle is the same as the slope, but the slope is equal to the derivative evaluated at this point. So it is equal to 2c. Now, I will leave it as an exercise to show that this formula implies the tangent of alpha is 1 over 2c. And this is quite easy. You just need to use the formula for tangent of alpha plus beta. 
Now, once again, we are interested in this line here. If we redraw this picture a bit more clearly for our purposes, we will have two orthogonal lines. We'll have our slope and then we'll have a tangent line. Sorry, the reflected line. So this will be our tangent line. And this is going to be our reflected line. Now, according to our labeling, the incoming ray was at angle alpha to the tangent and reflected line has to leave the tangent at the same angle alpha according to this law. But we also know that this angle here is 90 minus alpha. Now we notice that these two lines are straight lines and that means that this angle here must be equal to this angle here. I will mark it in green. So this angle is equal to alpha. And now we are done. Why? Because we know that this is the line, the slope of which we're interested in. So we actually want to know this angle. But we know that this angle is 90 minus alpha, and this is alpha. So this has to be 90 minus 2 alpha. Because if you add it to alpha, you get exactly 90 minus alpha. So from this diagram, we know that the slope of a reflected line is equal to tangent of 90 minus 2 alpha. I will again use the double angle formula and this identity derived in the beginning to show that the slope is actually equal to C minus quarter times 1 over C. Now the only thing left is to give the equation of this line. So we know that in general it's gonna be like that. It's gonna be y equals, this is the slope, c minus 4 over c x plus some unknown constant b. But how can we learn b? Well, we know that this line has to pass through this point. Passes through c comma c squared because y equals x squared. Therefore, we know that this identity must hold. If I bring C inside, this becomes this. Now C squared cancel, and I get that B equals a quarter. So my equation is now this times X plus a quarter. Now here is what we should observe, that when X is equal to zero, Y is equal to a quarter. Why is this peculiar? Well, because it is independent of C, right? So that means that I could have chosen a different vertical line conduct 
the same procedure here for some other C, and I would still get a quarter. That precisely means that all these reflected lines, let's draw another one here, will cross at one point for our specific parabola, this point ends up being zero comma a quarter. It's brilliant. I hope I didn't make any mistakes and it would be a good exercise to conduct all these calculations yourself and see how beautiful parabolas are. So now if you have sound signals coming from the far, they will condense, they will amplify at this point. And if you, if you have a microphone or your ears, you will hear something that happens at a distance. It's magical.